Days after being organized, this second government of Sheikh Moudi Boudiara is hard at work. Among the subjects focused on in the cabinet meeting is the situation in the north of Mali, where extremely violent Islamic radicals are maintaining a reign of terror. We must work very hard to make detailed preparations to provide full support for the organizing of the national army so it can take back as soon as possible the occupied regions. Though this new government led by Sheikh Modi Boudiara wants to show it is taking action, it is drawing heavy criticism from a large number of Malian politicians. The criticism began with the nomination by the Prime Minister of three special advisors with the rank of minister. The nominations brought back to the government three former ministers who had been let go of by the president. We have been meeting with a group of experts and we are drawing up plans to contest this decision in court. We want the government decrees to be cancelled because if we accept this decision, we will be opening a Pandora's box. Far from all the arguing and disagreements rocking the political world in Mali, the chiefs of staff of the armies of ECOWAS countries were meeting on Friday in Abidjan. At the heart of their conversations is a possible military intervention in the north of Mali. But ECOWAS countries are having real trouble putting this together because of serious disagreements within their ranks. Well, after being accused of playing a vital role in the rebellion in the Democratic Republic of Congo, Rwanda's President Paul Kigami has said that he was launching a special program that would drastically reduce Rwanda's over-dependence on foreign aid. Much of Kigali's development programs come from its European allies who have threatened to stop providing development aid if Paul Kigami does not stop meddling in the DRC's protracted conflict. Let's look at this report for more. Rwandan President Paul Kagame has announced a new campaign to launch a development fund that aims to reduce Rwanda's dependence on foreign aid. A number of guests present at the launch made in a big hotel in Kigali immediately gave their donations. Individuals, civil society, businesses and Rwandans living abroad all being called on to donate to the new fund. This is not a tax. It's not obligatory. The name of the fund, Agashiro, in Kinyawanda means dignity. The fund will restore our dignity and reinforce it by contributing to our own financial development. Kigani denies any link between the new fund and the decision by a number of Western countries to cut aid. Rwanda is accused of supporting rebels fighting in the east of DR Congo. Germany, the Netherlands and the United States have cut some or all of their aid to Rwanda. According to the president, the whole world is hostile to Rwanda. When someone has been tracking you down for some time and you find yourself with your back to the wall, you do everything you can to defend yourself. We must reinforce our own capacities so that we are not caught out, so we can protect ourselves. Reactions from the public in the streets of Kigali are positive. I'm fully supporting this idea, and uh, actually I wished could have come before. We will all make a contribution. We will all do what we can to make sure this fund works, that it is operational. The Rwandan authorities have not announced any fixed amount they hope to collect. According to the government, all donations will be used to finance the national budget devoted to economic development and to fight poverty. A court in Norway has sentenced a Derlund gunman who killed 77 people on Utoya Island in the shooting spree and 10 others in the capital Oslo to 21 years in prison. And as Bravik is going to spend part of his time behind bars writing about his links with extremist groups critical of the spread of Islam in Europe. As we hear in this report, some Norwegians believe the terms and conditions of his prison sentence are soft, given the seriousness of the crimes he committed. Bering Brevik, who killed 77 people in two attacks in Norway last year, has been found sane and been sentenced to 21 years in jail by an Oslo court. 
He arrived to hear the verdicts in person. Brevik carried out one of the worst shootings in Europe in the name of his fight against Islam and multiculturalism. Although psychiatric experts disagree on some points, he was eager to be found responsible of his actions and his lawyers said that should he have been interned in a psychiatric ward, he would have appealed the court's decision. He smiled slightly as he was told by judges that he would face the maximum prison sentence. Most Norwegians are relieved by the outcome of this court case. I think this is a relief for everyone and yeah, I think this will be like positive for for most Norwegians. People wanted this verdict and and it will give us an op opportunity now to sort of get rid of him for for a while and and have him behind bars. Brevik looks set to spend most of his future life in the Isla High Security Prison and his sentence could be prolonged. He will be placed in three cells of eight square meters, including one he will use for physical exercise. In the other, he will also be able to use a computer, although he will not have access to the internet. His lawyers say he will spend his time writing an autobiography that will reveal information on the Neil Templar or International Christian Military Order he claims to belong to. Many Norwegians believe his prison conditions are too comfortable. Well, time now to take our second break. We'll be right back. Welcome back with most Nowhere Time Zones preparing ahead of the seasonal championship. Community members are pushing to put in the final pieces to their preparations. Our Babuka Sengo visited one of the most popular Nowhere Time centers and reports members are hopeful of providing the Bakau community with a viable football field in the coming football season. To the Bakau community football field, a venue more akin to a greasing land than a field fit for a football Sudan. This field's condition stems out of years of neglect and a perennial lack of direction in the way the piece of land can serve its purpose. To ensure that is done, the new interim committee has kick-started the regeneration drive to inject life into one of the most vibrant sporting communities in the country. It is an adventure that looks on the surface mightily impossible with the current state of the field, but members of the Baka Youth and Sports Committee are confident things can change for the better trying very hard and every other day we are meet with my executive we always have a meeting this field is our headache we don't even sleep because uh, if you can see the past years is you know normally Bakao goes and play at the independent stadium and this time round what I told the, the, the club reps is we are going to play in our very old field because uh, it's just terrible for us to go out and play there why we want to play here simply is all right we spoil it let's come and play and find solution to the problem. If people saw us playing there, at least they can come on our aid. But if, you are, if we are running away from our own pitch that we destroy for ourselves, you know, people will not come on our way. It is a bold new approach and the idea was given its first endorsement when Sports House, one of the country's leading sportswear dealers, donated this giant trophy to the committee. If you want to take this game that was existing at the park there at the stadium to be brought here, it means you have to make sure that this place is convenient. If it is not convenient for the time being, start it convenient and then you move on. But again, we believe that because of the cream that we have and the youth that are coming up, these are people who deserve to be given a better field. And if they have their talents, they can better maximize their talents if they have a comfortable, convenient environment. For clubs vying for the prestigious Navitan tournament, steps taken by the new interim committee are signs that life on the field is slowly returning to normalcy once more. But Bakao and its sports will need a lot more effort through valuable support to re-inject life into this football field. On Monday, as uh, information to you, mm. our partners, the Fajara Barracks, uh, these people are not only soldiers, they are our partners mm. and uh, they are part of our community. Mm. So we have been uh, uh, 
discourse in hand in hand in terms of uh, security and in terms of community work. And they felt uh, they are part of us, they are part of Bakao. Mm. And 